Let me tell you this story I was just telling it in, in Sunday school, but I, I think this is powerful. And uh, you know what? I know that nobody in here likes to fast and pray. But you know, sometimes fasting and praying moves you into, into a place where God begins to move. He begins to move through you and do things in you. And uh, Henry and his crew, they were in Rome. And I was just telling this story in Sunday school. They were in Rome and they, you know, how many of you know that there, there's real devils out there? And there's real devils that have power over cities. They have power over nations. They have power over people. And these princes, they have power that dominates these people. Well, it's like India. They're, they're the princes, they dominate that nation. And we were talking about this. It's filth. The nation is filthy. It's garbage. How many of you know sin is garbage? It brings forth filth and garbage. He said he was in Rome and he said that God began to deal with them and they began to pray and seek the Lord. And he said that the Lord showed him what he had to do. And he said that they went to this place on the road and he said there was two big old drains. And he said they they would open up. And he said that they opened them up and the Lord told him, he said, I want you to go down first and have your crew follow you. And I want you to pray in tongues when you go. He said they went down, they opened the big gate. He said he knew where to go. We opened it, went started going down, got down there deep under the city. And he said it was a big open, I guess it was a big open drainage of some kind. I'm not sure. He didn't explain it to me real well. And he said as we got in there, he said, and we got to the bottom. He said as I stepped over the end of the stairs, he said I looked to my left and there was a huge black angel. He said I looked to my right and there was a huge black angel. He said these things were 33 feet tall probably. He said their hands were this big. He said they were massive. He said they were huge things. And he said the one on my left was sitting there and kneeling with his hands on his fist, kneeling on his knees, just kneeling over there. The same guy was doing the same thing over here. And he said when he stepped on the floor down there, they both perked up and stood up. And they looked right at him and they said, what are you doing here? And you know, generally you would say, well, that would be a little bit scary. He said, the boldness rose up in me. He said, that's the power of the Spirit. He said, and he just looked right at me. He said, they were huge. He said, he just looked right at me. He said, I bind you in the name of Jesus by the power of the blood you have over authority. And he said, big chains fall out of heaven. He just wrapped them up. And he said, they fell out. He said, in there. He said, both of them, they fell out. He said, all they could do was blink. They had no more authority and no more power. And, he, and, the, and the Lord said, okay, Henry, you're done. Go home. He said he got on the stairs and went back up there. He said, I still don't know to this day exactly what that was all about. But he said, I know those demons are bound under that city and they cannot move. And they've been laying there for years because somebody stood in the gap. Somebody prayed. And they had the authority to take them down. How many of you know the Bible says that you can bind demons? Don't you think he was bound up? He might as well have been dead because he can't function because the chains of heaven have bound him up and he's on the ground and he can't function. He can't dominate like he did. Isn't that awesome? How many of you know, how many of you know that there's a possibility that there may be demons around here doing the same thing? But did you know that we as children of the king, as, as ambassadors of the kingdom of God, we have the power to go out and say, devils, hold it. You don't have the authority. You don't have the right. And if you did, we're going to take it. And stop them. Set them down. And say, okay, Father, let the light go. Amen. Touch the people now. Yes. You know, it's it, how many of you know that we, we, we're talking about the reality of what can be done? This is not something that we have to think whether we can do it or not. This is something that Jesus said, go out and take it. You know, we, we, Kelly quotes the scripture to me now and then, you know, heaven suffer violence, and the violent take it by what? That's right. How many of you know the devil understands power? And he don't understand your power, but he understands the power of the Holy Ghost in you. And he will walk away. He won't have no, you won't have no more mess. You just win. I believe this morning that it's time we uh, understand that uh, we've been called to be prayer people, intercessors. And, and, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. Again, back to Henry for just a minute. But you know, Henry, he just was obedient to God. He did what he had to do, and he always did what he needed to do. And he was very sensitive to the Spirit of God, the best he could. I can tell you stories about that, but I won't. But he said that um, when he quit his job down there in, in Washington, Oregon, where it was at, he was making big money. And he was the next man to be the very top. He was going to be vice, uh, second vice president. That's where he was going. 
And he said he retired and he cashed out. I don't know if he wants this on video or not, but I'm going to say it anyways. He cashed out. Took his whole retirement. And he said that God told him, he said, that's it. You're going to go and you're going to do this. And he said, yes, Lord, I'll go. He said, for 30 years to the present day, 30 years, he's lived by totally by faith. He said, I don't tell anybody nothing about what I have need of or anything. He said, God, not only does he supply my family with everything they need, he had 13 kids. Now that's, you know, if you have 13 children like waiting over here, you're just spending billions of dollars on food. <laughs> Because me and my husband can go eat, you know. Wayne's bigger than I, mean, he's only 15. I feel sorry for his. He's going to have to work hard to live, ain't he? He had 13 kids. And they were all in his house when he was overseas working. But you know what? God didn't just supply his ticket to go over there and come back and take care of business over there. He supplied for his family over there. That's amazing to me. For 30 years, my friends. So what am I saying? I'm saying, you know what? If we were become prayer people, intercessors, see God be sensitive to His voice. Did you know God do what He's got to do? And you'll be okay as well? Did you know you'll grow too? You'll increase and you'll be, you'll increase in the power of the Spirit of the Lord even though you're praying for somebody else. It's just, you know, just being in His presence, you develop and you grow. So, you know, my, my point this morning, and I haven't got all of this said, but I will over time. My point this morning is this. We are called to intercede. That's our call. Some of the, you know, I really truly believe, and I don't, I don't know who the 24 hours are. Well, one of these days we even asked me, he says, hey, Dad, who are the 24 hours? And I said, I don't know. I said, even God didn't tell us who they were. They just, it's just written in there, there's 24 hours. He said, well, uh, do you think so-and-so may be one? Or do you think so and so? I said, you know what? It's like uh, James and or was it, uh, was it James and John that come and, and, and talk to Jesus and said, "Hey, uh, Jesus, <clears throat> if it's possible, maybe we can have these two boys sit one on your right hand." He said, "Hey, uh, can they drink the cup that I'm going to drink?" Yeah, we can do that. Well, that's good. They, they will, but that's not for me to tell you. But I want to tell you what I meant to say in all that is. I really believe that some of the people you expected to be sitting on the 24 thrones probably won't be there. But some of the people you never heard of, that will be there. You know why? Because those are the people that stood behind the people you saw. The people that were prayer people, they're the people that supported the whole operation. You just didn't ever see them. But they're the people that really made the whole thing happen. Because they're the people that the Spirit of God was flowing through to make all this stuff happen. And all you saw was the frills and the, the glimmer and the glamour. All, you didn't see what was going on behind the scenes, but these guys were the guys doing the work. You know, like Grandma Mamie. A lot of people will never hear her name, but you know what? There's a lot of people that stand where they stand because she prayed. Mm -hmm. 